Blog Talk Radio. EAD, welcome to the war room. We got Taz, Kill, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, a hot block commander. How you wanna end up one or two hour show and keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level? Both with the topic, sort of like the rubble. When it's game time, they like the fat five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates to beat their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, diversified and educated. What up, though? What's good, War Room family? You are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts, Dev McMillan. I'm in the building with my brothers. We got B. Austin in the house. We got Jimmy the Blueprint. Look, the city is still buzzing, and B. Austin and I are still basking in the glow of the Philadelphia Eagles' first Super Bowl win. However, we're going to switch gears and discuss NBA All-Star Weekend and a whole lot more. Uh, Jimmy's with us for maybe the first half an hour, 40 minutes of the show. So we're going to jump right into some some good topics uh, because actually the reason he's leaving is one of our topics. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. You'll see what that is in just a minute. So make sure you settle in, keep it locked right here. And if you want to get in on the conversation, make sure you join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or you could join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly in about 30 minutes when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number, 323-410-0012. Quick reminder, during the week when we're not live on the air, be sure to check out all of the archived episodes of our show at our website, warroomsports.com, the War Room Sports mobile app, which is free on Android and iOS, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, wherever else you get uh, great podcasts. So what up, brothers, man? Another week in America marred by a mass shooting at a school. Yo, Uh, why why, why does this only happen generally in America? What the hell? I mean, why? why? You know why. (laughs) The Austin calling from, um... (laughs) Yo, the Austin calling, he's being strangled. (laughs) <laughs> Yo, he's telling, like, he's telling like he's currently being strangled as he speaks. But um, it, it's, it's I mean, video game. Listen, I mean, this country is is, oh, is sure. it's a dangerous country, man. Like um, it's a violent country. You know, it's, yeah. it's funny because I love America. I'm I'm thankful to be Good. in America. You know, but at the same time, one thing I, I recognize is, you know. With that being said, it's okay to put a mirror up to your country and show some of the nastiness that 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 you know happens in your country. A lot of people feel like if you talk about the nastiness and show the nastiness that you're not a patriot or you're not you're un-American. But you know, we we got some issues in our country and, and violence is one of them. Um, mental violence. health is one of them. Definitely violence. You know, um, some of the violence the that you're talking about. Gun culture. Yo, B, 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 you got to do something. What's going though. on? Um, you sound but like the, you the violence. Matter of fact, Jim, like, it, that's that's the thing. Like, because every time something like this comes up, you know, you had a whole conversation about gun control. Um, and, uh, and I think a lot of people on the other side of that argument don't understand exactly what people are saying because, you know, the first thing people do is they want to take your guns so they can make you slaves and this and that. And, like, people just jump off the hook. <laughs> but I'm like, uh-huh. I haven't really heard anybody propose yet that they would confiscate guns. The gun control that I've heard about and read about is just to make it a little more difficult for people to just run out and get, you know, military grade weapons. Like there's Listen, been 18 man. school shootings already this year, and we're just hitting mid February. And Listen, I think man. every it's one crazy. of those joints were done by like an AR-15. Remember back in the it's, crisis it's, days, Jim, we used to wonder how everybody in the street got Uzi. Like how are people getting AR-15s? Uh, in, and they in suppose the, in, the words, have mental in the words in the words of the prophet, um, uh, you know, known uh, as Wesley Snipes. Um, well, not not Wesley Snipes, but his character. He said, "Ain't no Uzis made in Harlem." You know, Brown. Right. That is that's the prophet. Ain't, ain't no Brown. Ain't, ain't no Uzis ain't no made in Harlem. AR fifteens made in North Philly. But here's <laughs> here's the crazy part. There are dudes now, like you know, I may or may not have seen it, who literally are in the streets with with rocket launchers. Like, so my thing is. 
How does that happen? And, 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 and the fact, yo, and the fact of the, the fact of the matter is, like you know, um, gun control is an interesting topic because when you hear, well, first of all, you're right. Some people are just, you know, they're not going to take it out of my uh, cold dead hands. But when you talk to someone who really understands uh, gun control and who can articulate the points from the other side, it, it starts to make sense because you understand that, you know, a well armed militia is kind of to keep the government in check. Because um, right. it's not going to be nice if they just strip your guns and that the government's the only one. But the fact of the matter is, like, you know, the left is just as bad as the right. You know, there's bad people on both sides. Yeah. Shout out to uh, you, man. It, even, um, even, in that still, line, even in that scenario, scenario that line Jim? of thinking a little antiquated. In, in that line of thinking a little antiquated, about, though. Because what I, I was mean, about I, to say is even in that scenario, if the government are coming for you, your guns ain't going to do much to stop it. <laughs> I mean, well, no, but, yeah. but here's the thing. Here's the thing. If enough of us have guns, yes, we will. Um, and there's a, there's a number of people who do have guns. That um, requires unity. But the fact, the fact, the fact, <laughs> but the fact I mean, that, yeah, that's a whole other a whole other topic. But the fact of the matter is, um, I wouldn't want to live in a country where you know um, I couldn't have one. But at the same time, I also don't want an AR-15. I don't um, I don't need um, you know automatic weapons. You know. Um, no, no. So. I, and, I'm 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 with you too. Like I I don't want to I don't want to be in a country where you're not allowed to have a gun. I just don't want radio to be able to get a gun. Like, you know, four minutes into yeah. asking for one, he he walked well, away from the, the counter. Thing, with, the, with, you know, the, the one great. thing the one thing is the one thing is the people that are allowed to get them, and the other type, the other part is the types of guns they're allowed to get. Um, right. Like, what do you need that for? Yo. <laughs> Like you, you know what I mean, so so that it's 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 and that's why I said it's an interesting topic because there's so many layers to it. It's not just um, yeah. black and white. Where either you're it's going to have them or you won't have them. Definitely, yeah, it's definitely layered. Um, but when you look at this at, at American culture, the, we we live in a society of gun culture. Like I, mm-hmm. I know you brothers are very well traveled, and so when you spend time in other parts of the world, guns are far 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 less less prevalent like we are socialized to believe oh yeah we should all you know we should carry like it's not a big deal Mm -hmm. to 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 carry and the right like people actually fight over the right to say i should be able to kill someone with my gun if they (laughs) step into my my personal space or if they take something from me if you come in my my house Let's say, and you're and and you steal a pair of my Jordan. It was in within my legal right, your life, and and being socialized. And I'm not I'm not precluding myself from it because I, it's normalized. Like I don't think anything. Oh, somebody tried to rob him. Oh yeah, he's you like know, he's like brain, I can't brain really spaghetti. <laughs> Listen, man. But so it's it, it, we. But when you go to I heard it explained by an Anglo-Saxon gentleman. It it was funny. He was like, America is a culture of European rejection because in Europe, a lot of countries wouldn't allow the citizens to have weapons so prevalently because they feel they're not savages and they don't have to deal with savagery. That's like, that was explained to me. I was like, wow, I never really thought about it like that then i said oh but, wow but see, well, that, 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 that was my but that was my original point be often we we live in a violent yeah. culture even outside of just yeah. the weaponry like our culture is just yeah. violent it's violent in general like we, we want to hurt each other yeah, we like, we love blood so we have yeah. a cultural problem yeah, blood, blood. and, and, and yeah. as i was saying I mean, look before, at our look at our favorite you know pastimes and our favorite sports you know football boxing mma like we love to see mm-hmm. people getting Getting each other, you know, bludgeoned like that's what we do in America. We are a very violent country, no doubt about that. Yes, we are. We definitely are a violent country. So you know, they always say that. Uh, what they say? They say guns don't kill people. People kill people. We just happen to have all the people who like to kill people. And mental health is a, is a huge problem. Americans kill people. And mental, <laughs> and, 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 and mental health is like yeah, a huge. People a huge don't kill too. people. Americans kill. Because you know what? Yeah, that's, 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 like, that's, yeah. Let's just say. Let's just say they take the guns away. You're going to have these kids try to figure out how to trigger bombs in their school because these kids are going to get their death game off. So they're going to figure out another way. But that's the thing. That, that's two areas of America, though, that, that there's always a problem. You know, guns and some kind of, you know, just sensible way to 
distribute them and healthcare. Healthcare is always an issue in America. So you got mental health, and you just got violent people with guns. So that, it just don't mix. Just and America's run mix. by money, so you got to figure that that's a huge industry that you're tackling too. So um, oh, yeah. mix the capitalism in with it, you know. And now we really get into some uh, some deep waters. I mean, because plus a lot of these politicians who are for, you know, the the gun laws as they're currently constituted. <laughs> They probably don't care either way besides the fact that the NRA has funded many of their campaigns seven digits. So mm-hmm. you know, now I care whatever way you want me to care. All right, so let's get into some of this spokes because I know people want to hear some spokes. Um, Jimmy, what happened this week, man, while everybody was on the Absolutely. ground besides, you know, the babies getting shot up? It's time to talk about what happened while you were on the ground. Yeah. And the first thing I want to talk about is this, man. Listen. Um, there's some crazy stories that happened in the past week. The first one I want to talk about is uh, I want to talk about the cocaina. Uh, Esteban Oiza was arrested. Um, now here's the thing: I heard 20 kilos, about right. 20 pounds. Name is Esteban. I heard about I heard about 44 pounds. I've heard 60 kilos. The number is uh, ridiculous. All that means is depends upon um, you know the authorities oh, probably took some home for themselves. But he got caught with a lot. <laughs> and the crazy part about this story is. Um, they were watching a specific area, right? So he was driving a 2010 Mercedes Benz, and um, you know it looked suspicious, now, whatever that means, because um, they were surveilling an area in Imperial Beach as part of a narcotics investigation. And um, they said his 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 truck looked like one that uh you know was rumored to be in a smuggling operation. Had a secret so he compartment and everything. He got pulled over. They saw a secret compartment, right? So they see the secret compartment. You know they hold him up. They got a search warrant, and they found They went to his crib and found, like, you know, that's the thing. I've heard 44 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever it may be. Well, well 20 birds. 40, 44, pounds, 44 pounds would be 20 kilos because a kilo is 2.2. No, no. I just learned Either that. way, no, it, was a, it was a flock of birds. No, no, but here's the thing. They also, <laughs> like, so the, the thing is, and, and, you know, shout out to you for, um, you know, Knowing how to break that down, you know what I'm saying? You and your Foxy Brown joint, 0.2 grand. And, anyway, Bi- but I'm um, class, you know? Because he, he carried a book and he distributed the cocaine. But, but the point is, the point is, depending upon what, um, what, uh, what paper you go to, is kind of sensationalized. Like one just said, you know, amount that uh, they have to weigh the scale, you know, use the scale to weigh the whales with. That was in one of the articles. But the point is, <laughs> nonetheless, my man had a whole bunch of that, of that Escobar on him. Yeah. So, um, it's and he was a big time to play picture. that. It's time to play that. It's time to play that clip, though, brother. Shout out to the clips. Why <laughs> me? <laughs> Listen, though, but he played 14 seasons uh, in the majors, and he actually was a Yankee at one point. Um, he won about 126 games, had an ERA of 4.65. Where, so where he got all a, the money from. Yankees yeah, always so overpaid. He had a solid career. He started his team. He had a solid career. Yeah. <laughs> Yankees gave him his starter. Come on, man. He, he, he had a he solid career, man. Years. But obviously. <laughs> he had to fall back. <laughs> yeah, yo, he got to fall back. Had to fall back. Yo, yeah, he got to fall the back. crazy. I mean, after all of the stuff that Jimmy just detailed, the dude is pleading not guilty to to the charges that he smuggled and possessed all of this stuff. And um, the the DA who's prosecuting the in the case had the bail raised to two hundred and fifty grand because they're arguing he's a flight risk because he has significant financial uh, assets. And he has ties to Mexico. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. the last part sounds like some American racism ties to Mexico. It definitely does. It, it definitely sounds does. like some American racism. Yeah. Yeah, it is American <laughs> racism. We, yeah, we violent and we racist, and I'm still proud of you. Hey, but listen, though. Um, Casey Mack, right? And this brings up another point that is really part of the story, but it's not part. Casey Mack, so we should move on, because when he got to the Texas Rangers, he was horrible. But my thing is this. Now, does Casey Mack have two baseball teams, too? Of course, ah. two of everything except for the Yeah, and, and, he and, and he does. And Casey Mack, yeah, I'm, I'm asking the, that because, the, uh, yeah, when the Royals won, when the Royals yeah. won, you party. <laughs> yeah, so, if I'm not mistaken, Mack living that double life, man. You got two homes. You living homes. that download double life in baseball, too? He crazy. I don't know. I don't so, know the years he played, but got, I probably uh, lived in the Washington podcasts. area just as long as he's lived in the Dallas I probably lived in the Washington area just as long as he lived in the Dallas area. And there ain't no way in hell that I will ever end up rooting for these teams. Like, I don't mind, like, the Wizards. I don't mind the Wizards. 
You know what's interesting? I, I kind of mind the Nets now because good. they actually got good and the fans get a little cocky. Um, but you know what's funny, right? Um, in Casey, Mag, I, I need you to answer me a question. How long have you been in Texas, and, and how long were you in Casey at this point in your life? Which, which uh, city did you spend more time in? That's the one question. The second thing is people that I know who live in a different city from where they were born or raised, um, the people I know, and I know people that live all over the world who's from Philadelphia, it seems like they have a, 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 yeah, they have a bigger enjoyment of being, I'm from Philly, than people who actually live in the city. Like, right. they, they take their fandom even more serious than the people who live saying, within the re- city. Because when you live within the city, it's just stupid done. hard. Because we feel, like, are, so we're trying trying to we feel like a loner in enemy territory, so you rep extra hard. So for KC you know Mac I mean? to go and just embrace the new town, that's kind of it's kind of weak, Mac. You should have stuck with all the KC teams. Well, it's probably not as fun for him though, because those teams aren't rivals of the team of the, of the place that he lives. For us, it's like there's no way in hell, like <laughs> no way. No, no, I'm turning awesome. to a Washington fan. Yeah, but, but also uh, in KC Mac, I'm, I'm I'm only speculating here. But if the Royals remain what the Royals have been. Um, you probably would have never even let us know you claimed you're none of these You'd have been like, I've been all my life. Anyway, <laughs> with all that being said, um, my man is pleading not guilty to this charge, even though he got caught with the work and everything. So we'll see how this plays out, and we will report back about how it plays out. Um, another story. Speaking of uh, the Washington professional football team, a Washington fan congratulates <laughs> Nick Foles in a Texas newspaper. So this is considered trolling. Now listen to the story and, and recognize that this story is layered because <laughs> he's saying he's a Washington fan, but it's Matthew McConaughey, um, mm-hmm. who's uh, the Lincoln lawyer, who's from Texas. He's, he congratulated on the Texas newspaper, but, you know, they're saying he's a Redskins fan. I didn't know he was a Redskins fan. You, maybe you guys knew that. But, um, mm-hmm. I didn't know that either because they only talk talking. about him being a Texas Longhorn fan. Um. Yeah, like Jimmy, he's from Texas. Nick Foles is from Texas. Nick Foles went to the same high school as Drew Brees. He took out a whole page ad, and it says, from one local to another, congratulations, Nick Foles. Um, And it has, you know, the Texas, the shape of the state under it. Um, I mean, it makes perfect sense this guy's from Texas. Maybe he even went to the same school. I don't know. But he was really just congratulating somebody from his hometown. Um who just did something great. But like Jimmy said, the story has so many layers that it's just, it makes it so ironic that this dude is a Washington fan living like two hours from Cowboy Nation and congratulating a Philadelphia quarterback. Like that just don't mix and match. People get killed yeah, for stuff like that, B. America's very violent. But but I need I need to know whether he really drives a Lincoln or not because I don't know how he parlayed that starring in the movie Lincoln Lawyer to actually getting a deal with Lincoln where he could pay yeah. commercials. Yeah, my man Johnny drove that real in the, the Johnny drove in the movie was old as hell. <laughs> I know, I know. And somehow he parlayed that into a whole commercial. I'm like, he got. I got to find out whether this man really got a Lincoln or not. Or he just getting that check. You know what I'm saying? I, I they, well, they get, they give you one anyway. But the question is, does he drive it? Because we know. You know, Tiger Woods wasn't driving Buicks. He had too much money. Yo, but yo, yo, but Tiger did drive it. Here's the crazy part is, right? So when Tiger did the Buick, he did the same thing. And they had like a special. No, Tiger actually drove a Buick that they ain't sell. Like, it was like Tiger's Buick. Like, okay, you do drive a Buick, but you drive a Buick that Buick ain't making for nobody else. Yeah, he had some. He had a Tiger Woods Buick. Like, his Buick had (laughs) everything on the ground. He had a Buick 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 Elgin. Yo, he had a Elgin. Tiger Woods deal, and I'm like, but when you do the commercial, this is what you showing. You showing, you showing the everyday job. He had a Buick. Right. He had a Buick Elon. A Buick. Like, Elon. My man ain't that. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he can't, can't drive. He can't drive the Tiger on the commercial because everybody gonna want a Tiger and they don't sell. Yo, it, you know, so. yo, my man Tiger had a 2047 Buick. I'm like, hold up, though. You ain't got the everyday job you be in the commercial with. But even worse than that, the, the most egregious one for that, uh, the, the Shaq. Shaq. Because yeah. what commercial does Shaq have? He can. Oh, yeah. He had some commercials. It was Buick as well. But no, Shaq can't even. Shaq can't even fit in the Buick. Yeah. Like, they probably had to, like, carve dude out of the joint just to get a, a 10-second shot of him inside the car on the commercial. So, so like, yeah. So, like, even with LeBron, LeBron, LeBron probably had LeBron, 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 LeBron driving a Kia. LeBron driving a Kia is pretty bad as well. Yo, but like even if he has a Kia, team. it's probably the Tiger scenario too. The Kia that Brian has probably is something. Yeah, he probably got like a twenty seventy four Kia, like 
Same with Blake. They ain't driving the everyday Jones, even if they have them. See, but Brian probably driving a Kia, and they probably making sure he's getting ridden by a Kia. Oh, you know what I mean? They, he got hooked up. Either, <laughs> yeah. Way you yeah. And, the, and I ain't going to front. It's true. K900 is kind of hot. LeBron says he has one. The K900 ain't bad. Is LeBron just using that to, you know, go to the supermarket or something, that's that's a nice car, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fire. That's I mean, they smack. They, they they put Saturn out of business. I remember they used to be comparable, and then Kia was like, watch this. And now <laughs> Saturn was like, no, Saturn was like, peace. Because my wife Yo, told me that Kia, I didn't even realize Kia Saturn like a, doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. It, it, it's gone. Like after Kia 2012, 13, something like that. Uh, Kia let their hands <laughs> go. Kia let their hands go. Oh. Um, Kia is a part of Hyundai is what I hear. Yeah. Yeah, they got they got purchased. So it was sort of like one of them Jones Club mm-hmm. B. Austin where they was trying to do the same strategy as everybody else where, like, you know, we have our Kia version and Hyundai's like the, the version up. Mm-hmm. Sort of like the Toyota Lexus right. and all that. But, you know, but Hyundai never uh, really got the upgrade right. that they should have. Yo, am I the only person in the world that didn't know Saturn doesn't exist anymore? Right. <laughs> Yo, I didn't know that. Yo, <laughs> no, shout no, out to no, us I, for I talking about that. Saturn a lot of and the Matthew McConaughey job. care. This is probably new. <laughs> All right, so let's hear some more controversy from us from this violent country this week. Uh, um, the Hussein Obamas unveiled their portraits. Um, and an <laughs> argument on social media ensued based upon the portraits. Uh, you know, I heard. I heard people say Michelle's Jones is nice, just don't look like her. They said uh, Barack had the Beyonce album cover with the flowers and whatnot. So I heard a lot of different, uh, See, um, you know, but opinions did, did about you it. Hear, like the, these, these are arguments. When you say that about Michelle's, people come with so many excuses about how that's the, you know, the artist that's their style. So Michelle knew what she was doing. Okay, that might all be true, but if somebody thinks the picture is trash, then they think it's trash. It's like. You know how people get, man. People get so offended. Yeah. If you say anything negative about the Obamas, you could be the biggest Obama fan ever and just say, I don't particularly like the portrait. And people well, still will go with your neck. I'm finding a I'm theme on the show. It, go, it, goes to, it goes to what we said in the beginning of the show about the country, right? It's like, it's okay to like or love, even love something, and just not be like over the top. You still can criticize things that you love. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yo, I love my I'm wife, but I talk breezy to her almost every day. Like, yo, you should be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. I'm going to apologize. I mean, I'm going to apologize up front because we about to lose a whole lot of fans. Yo, they dish, yo, that portrait was disrespectful of the Obamas, man. Especially. You think so? I, I think his joint, his joint is thing. like, his joint looks real. Except for the fact, you know, you just wonder why he's sitting in Poison Ivy like that. But other than that, it looks just Here's like the thing, him. right? For me, kind of look like watercolors. Like, what are we doing here? Yo, <laughs> yo, art is subjective, right? Art is subjective. So there's probably people that love her portrait. So for me, I don't, I don't feel. I, it makes me feel nothing. Like when I look at the painting, it makes me feel nothing at all. Around. That's not like, like, I don't yo, but I care <laughs> enough. But people will jump down your throat because you said, "Oh, that doesn't yeah. even look like her." Well, do you know the art? Yeah. You don't even know art. That's the artist's style. That's Baba. Okay. But no, but like here's the thing. That is, that, but that doesn't do mean it. that you have to like it. But even if you feel like, no, you, I got like a, her, if you don't like it, you don't like it. It don't you know, mean that you I got a portrait of me and my wife. I got a portrait of me and my wife in my crib that somebody in jail uh, painted. She hated it. She don't think it looked yeah. like her. And it, it really don't. So, I, like, Yo, it's in my that. house. So, if I can criticize that, why can't I criticize Hold up, this? though. Hold up, though. The Mona Lisa is trash. <laughs> Yo, shout out, shout out to our brother. Shout out to our brother Survive. We had a whole shout conversation about how the Mona Lisa is trash. Yeah. I mean that the yeah. trash with that is more of the disappointment when you when you know you hear all about the Mona Lisa all growing up and then you go see it and it's like an eight by ten. You be like, that's it. <laughs> Yo, it's still a trash. Yo, even beyond yo, even beyond that part, that is trash. It, it put like this. Family it's, it's half it's half trash because what I what I do recognize about that. Because after we had that conversation, I spent countless hours, I don't know why, I need to get a life, trying to research why the Mona Lisa is as popular as it is. And they said it was like the first time that an artist used some sort of technique where you look in her eyes, it looks like she's smiling, she and like you back her. away and don't look at her. Yo, like, it, it, it's some sort of like, um, it is way that he did that this way. painting. Yeah, so when I saw that, like I was like, at you too. 
Yeah, when you when you look at the eyes, it makes it like she's smiling. But if you don't look at the eyes, then she's not smiling. It's like a frown. It's like how the hell he do that? He let like shot the Da Vinci, but it's still trash though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did that. He did that while he was yeah. meth. Yo, that's that's like that's like a trash yeah, album with one fire song. <laughs> Yo, that pick or a the, trash the, album the, with the picture, crazy cover. Yeah. First with, of all, salute, salute to Michelle Obama because she has grown on me. Uh, I recall when Devin and I, I'm throwing you under the bus. I'm recalling when we uh, said like she was about like to be mad. And, <laughs> and he walked in. That's cool, though. We just couldn't let the outsiders do that. <laughs> outsiders can't. Be, yo, B. Austin will but let yo. her take the picture from the from the back. Like, my first lady Michelle my first lady Michelle I don't even claim Obama because F him but my first lady Michelle yo yo she <laughs> did uh she did us proud she did us proud man because she's sitting on something <laughs> yo 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 I love her. Yeah, I Dude. love man. Your word. Michelle is my first lady. You know, cut him off. not in the face. <laughs> he gonna get me murked, and then he gonna talk about first ladies. Uh huh. Yo, then talk That's about it. her rears. But anyway, man, I just find it interesting. Like you know, people people aren't objective when it comes to those. You know, to those two, and I understand why. Um, but it's an overall theme. It's like, yo, you can you can. Love someone, like someone, appreciate someone, but still be critical of them. You know what I mean? And it's, Man, it's son Jimmy gonna have me fly all the way back to France to look in the eyes of the Mona Lisa. Yo, let's make it a trip. It's a group trip. We going just to like we going to see the Mona Lisa. This is a talk, talk trash. But about that's it. the thing, Post though, the Jim. Norman Sports IG. It's so it's so small, and they barricade it off so far. You probably can't tell from where you got to stand. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna let yeah. you be close enough to do that. Uh, yeah, and that's also because it got stolen at one point, which helps also the uh, history stressed. of it. But, but the thing about the history of the Mona Lisa, um, so she you know, like I just want to keep keep, keep pointing that out that yo, it's okay to be critical of things that you like because this country boy is going so far the other way. It's like, yo, it's like Republicans co-sign stuff just because it's from another Republican. You know what I'm saying? People like football and baseball teams can co-sign BS just because of like people like Brian and they co-sign everything he does because he Brian. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta get away from that dog. King. This is what this is what B Austin comes in and throws some shade, but I, I you know what I mean I throw him a oop and he didn't even take it. Yeah, man. Salute yo, salute to LeBron. All star weekend. LeBron. He's chilling. <laughs> he, gotcha. he didn't make the all star game. There ain't no oops this week. <laughs> Got you. But that, but anyway, man, that's what happened while you were on the grind, man. Dev, give a couple birthday shout outs as we move forward, good brother. Yes, sir. Birthdays in the house. We give a quick birthday shout out. Um, we want to give a, and I don't know why we're doing this, but we've done it before to other horses, so we got to give this boy some, some, <laughs> some love. Uh, rest in peace. Shout out to Seattle Slough. Uh, the, the racehorse was born February fifteenth, nineteen seventy four, and uh, was sent to that glue factory on May seventh. 2002. Um, <laughs> what, man? Why you? Yo, why you laughing at my man Death, though? But, you know, Seattle Slew, Seattle Slew, Seattle Slew, but hold on, though. Seattle Slew was successful. So I'm pretty sure, like, before he went out, before he went out, he got to, like, you know, do his thing. He was successfully squeezed in yeah. that Homer's bottle. Yeah, but guess what, though? Before before I'm they sure came they in at that, I'm pretty sure he I'm pretty sure he put his thing down with a lot of the yami. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out mm-hmm. to, to um birthday shout out to Yaramir Yager who turns 46 years old. Um, this is dude he gonna try to Great. play hockey until the day he dies. Um, Yo, he just retired. No matter if it's in a if he is retired. No matter if it's in a you know. A, 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 Stay at home wreck YMCA league or, or or if it's in the NHL, he's gonna try to play. Yo, hockey um, hockey even had fun though. <laughs> shout out to Edgar Bennett, uh former running back for the the Packers, I believe. He turns forty nine. Yeah. Uh Mark Price. One of the names that you don't hear as much as you probably should. Maybe at this ben point Fouch, one of the more yo. underrated point guards 
in NBA history. Definitely foul shooter of all time. Yeah, he probably he top one fifty of all time. Point guard. (laughs) Hey, hey, hey! You tell me. Um, (laughs) You tell me. And shout out to the man um, handed my Philadelphia Eagles the championship trophy last week. Uh, the fast dude. We actually talked about him on the show for some reason last week. Daryl Green so turned trapped. 58 years old. I think, yeah, I think. Why Bill was he? Was what, what, was the relevant, was what, was the, what was the reason for What was the reason for him um, bringing the trophy to Lake? Was there any significant time who didn't do that? He might have just been. Miles a lot? No, I think every year it's like a Hall of Famer, ain't it? Yeah, or maybe but not. I wonder like how they didn't. Uh, didn't what's the name do it before? Uh, Willie McGinnis or somebody like that. Willie McG- Oh yeah, you know what he did. He did. I thought, but I thought the significance of him is because the Patriots are playing. But the Patriots yeah. play every year, so. So maybe they maybe it was NFC East. The Eagles probably ain't got no Hall of Famers that's still alive. And I guess they don't get do it close enough. He's, he, He's still employed by the team, so Doc couldn't do it, so they just grabbed somebody from Washington. That's cool. Eric Allen. All right, so those are, those are your birthdays for, the, for this week. Real quick, y'all can check out our website at worldroomsports.com. While you're there, make sure you take your time, look around, click on the Contact Us tab, send us a message about the company to show to inquire about sponsorship and advertising. Opportunities or joining the network in any capacity. For general increase, email us at info.worldroomsports.com while you're on the site. Make sure you click on the memorabilia tab and buy some of that small baller brand merchandise. Um, click the blog tab to read our latest articles on the All Fair and Sports and War blog. Then you can click the receptive icons and tabs to follow all our social media platforms, to subscribe to our iTunes podcast, to watch our webcast, Worldroom Sports TV, and the download. Download free World Room Sports mobile app on Android or iOS to get everything we just mentioned on the go. Join the JW Really Realty chat room right now during the show at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Enter the chat room. Just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If I have one or if you don't want one, you can sign into your Facebook or Twitter accounts. But while you're at it, make sure you click follow because that'll get you updates and reminders about the show every week. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, chat room, War Room Sports game time group on the me app. Anywhere else you want to ask a question during the show, um, but to call in and speak with us, the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline is now open. That number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you already listen from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. And while we check in the phone lines to see who's trying to holler at us, Jimmy going to get us into some hot topics before he gets up out of chair. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me to jump into these hot topics, which are brought to you by Sports the Book. If you're tired of reading the same old sports books with the same tired sports list rankings, and just face it, a lot of trash, you got to yes. pick up a sports book. Trash. It's a mixture of sports and hip-hop culture that'll keep you in the edge of your seat and keep you laughing. You get it at sportsthebook.com or go right to our website at warroomsports.com, but you have to get it. Yo, um, first topic, and, you know, funny, topic I'm staying around yeah. for. <laughs> Dave Chappelle will make black people laugh. Um, shout to Phil. I mean, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll smoke, we'll smoke yeah, the whole we'll race up. After, Eddie, after yeah. Eddie Murphy's brother started writing for him. Yo, um, <laughs> yo, my man spoke for the whole race. Like, Dave Chappelle don't make black people laugh. Like, damn. He's, yeah, he try, I think he's just trying, he trying to rumble him or something. He tried rumbling. Oh, yeah. Anyway, man. Um, speaking people, of Black Hollywood, saying that, then. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Black Hollywood, um, you know, real quick though, what's we'll up with the black comedians anyway? They were all going at each other. Like people let their hands go on Kev. Kev let his hands go on Blackson, and you know, like, like hip hop, man. People know how to stay relevant. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, Black Hollywood. We're talking about Black Panther, which is here. Um, and it's actually the reason I'm cutting my day a little early. I get ready to go. I got tickets for tonight. Um, and I know that people all over the world are excited about the release of this film. And uh, I was talking to Dev come before I came on the show. I said it's interesting to me because I think it's a beautiful thing. And I'm also hating. Uh, shout out to my brother Phil Maddock because I know um, he relates to what I'm getting ready to say. 
uh, like, because me and Phil had this conversation a couple of years ago. Like, we, um, we were comic book heads. So, for us, it's like, yo, Black Panther's being made. And you see everybody get into like it. Like, it's finally like, when you like a, type thing. Yeah. Yo, you, yo, it's like when you see a music artist and you like them, and then all of a sudden they become popular, you start hating on everybody else. So, I'm, I'm hating a little yeah. bit. But, um, which is no, the you know, thing about it is this. 80% see Black Panther this weekend ain't heard of until six months ago when they started advertising the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the thing, like part of me is a hater because of that, but also part of me wonders like is that a good or a bad thing, the fact that you can rally around something because I don't see people being able to rally around anything. So I kinda don't even know how to take the um the excitement of this movie. Um I know asking um, Disney to donate is kinda out of this world, like kinda crazy. I, so I wanted to I wanted I'm to let my hands go on social media all week, but I probably would have been buried or at least been dead in somebody's trunk by now if I'd have said something about the movie. And it ain't a movie. Yeah. It ain't about the movie because I'm going to see the movie. But the way that people, like Jimmy said, are rallying behind it. Like, at the end of the day, like I don't want to just diminish it and diss it like that, but, yo, it's a comic book movie. We've had way more important things that we couldn't get people to be this excited about. And a lot of the black people that are so excited – like like we said, like never heard of this before. Oh, who's Black Panther? <laughs> but nah, now you, you know it's what? like a national yeah. holiday. I, I feel you. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, Jimmy, I like you. I'm a bit of a comic book head. Um, mm-hmm. funny enough, I was never, I was never really into Black Panther. I mean, I know who he was, and I know you know the story of Wakanda. Um, I, I just knew him as a dude that was dating Storm and I felt like Storm was mine so eventually I was going to have to rumble Black Panther because so you hated you know, on him so basically you hated on him a little bit you hated on him a little bit yeah I hated I'm a, him a little bit I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna keep it a million with you it'll be Austin I'm gonna keep it a million with you the yeah. reason I was such a Black Panther head wasn't really because the comics were the greatest but that's not how we came up in terms of going to Ivy League yeah right. So so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I grew up I grew up in a um a pro black household, right? So I'm not a pro black. I appreciated pro the black. portrayal of of black royalty in the in the Marvel canon and in the Marvel universe. It was a beautiful thing. Yo, but people um, so people so don't I, say right. So so yeah. growing up in that in that environment that I grew up in, my father was like the most pro black dude there is. And my father was a member of the NOI, so you knew that he was about that black that black power life. So I was a young kid, and you know when you're young, your parents want to see what you're reading and what you're watching, and you know so there was only a couple black um, superheroes, right? So you had Luke Cage. Um, Blade was really a really a, a punk until Wesley kind of changed his whole image. But Luke Cage was like a Luke Cage was a street dude, a Harlem dude, or whatever. So because he was black royalty, that was like the like the the comic that my pop didn't mind buying me. So I could actually talk him into buying me these. Like so, I ended up getting a bunch of Black Panthers just because he wasn't trying to spend that he, bread. But for some reason, he would let yeah, his, he yeah. would let his bread hands go on that job. Yeah, he let his bread hands go because it was black royalty. So I ended up with a bunch of them. So therefore, henceforth, uh, you know, the pride in Black Panther and seeing it made to me was like a crazy thing. Um, but I also understand where Dev is coming from too. Because, you know, because when I, when I saw that whole petition about Disney has to get 25%, I just bust out laughing. I'm like, all right, so we're going to put our bread up and ask them to get 25% back. How about we just take 25% ourselves and give to something that we think is necessary? We won't do right. that. Yeah, that, that was uh, that was silly. That was extremely silly. Um, I I feel where y'all are coming from from the standpoint of, of, of 90%, if not more, of the people that are going to support this movie – are not Marvel comic book heads, but I like I li- I even saw somebody sitting in in the chair with uh, on uh, another another radio show, a New York station where they tried to tie in the Black Panther comic being a part of the origination of the name of the Black Panther organization. I've I've seen all types of great manifestations of oh, crazy. Right. They came out the same but year. But I like the diet. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like the dialogue that it's causing, and it's like, okay, so we're going to see a groundswell, and then we're going to see a regression back to the mean. But as Ooh. this thing pulls back and people lose interest because they're on to the next hot thing, if 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 only 
10 to 15 percent of the people that were in that groundswell now begin to follow, not only follow the comic, but support the deeper meaning. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm I okay am too. That. I'm, like, I'm okay I'm with that thing. The coin too. It just makes you mad that you know mm-hmm. we let something like Birth of a Nation flop, but you know people yeah. that know nothing about this, like we, you know, a comic book, John. We it's like yeah. a national holiday. But you know, but you know what, Dan? I also <laughs> think, I also yeah. think, yeah. I also yeah. think yeah. that, yeah. that is, I think that, real, real I think quick, that, quick, Jimmy, the birth of a nation thing is you can't, you can't. First of all, it was a real story, and it's harder to sell reality than it is fantasy. And then you're celebrating, you're celebrating killing the oppressor. So from in their minds, that that's a, a, a movie about a terrorist. In our minds, as a hero, we know he's a hero, but. It's harder to sell. You know, B. Be, be Austin stole my point. I wasn't going to be as eloquent with it. I was going to say black people love their masses, so they can't even like they, they can't even watch that happen. See now, the thing about this, this is fantasy, and it's an all black cast. So the good guys and you know, quote unquote shout bad out, guys. Shout out free, to Big on Love. Yo, free free Killmonger because I don't even think that um, he's a bad guy. But we'll, you know, we'll get to that later another time. But my point is um, that. That's why that kind of flopped, and I get your point. But I also think timing is a, is an amazing thing because I think that even this movie wouldn't have had this kind of momentum and everything if it came out say ten years ago or five years ago. I, I'm I'm wonder if we're in a is in the middle a counter, of a movement. Is this a counter to Trump? Is this a and no, they dropping this joint. Be, be, they they dropping this joint dead in the center of Black History Month too. <laughs> black History Month, but also, but also, it's like I wonder if we're in the middle of like a, a, a black consciousness movement that's happening because, and a lot of it is because of the, the killing of unarmed black men. It's because of the election of, um, you know, Twitter fingers. All of these things, I see people who are, you know, even what, even if it's fake, who are quote unquote woke or more conscious, and people who are out here trying to like, you know, support black business. So the thing is. It's dropping at the right time because there's like a, a certain a swelling of black consciousness that's happening within the country, whether it's real or fake or whether how long it lasts, we'll see. But it is something yeah. to it about the timing in which it drops. So I think that plays a major part of it. You know, there's a lot of uh, but you, you know fake woke. But you know what but I did? Is, like what I do know is too, a lot uh-huh. of people have pride because you know Marvel is such a big entity. A lot of people have pride that there's uh, a black comic book character but that's that's a that's kind of a part of a problem too because people that have the most pride about that think that it's new oh this oh they got a new black comic book character oh i'm going to see that yo it's been around since 66 i ain't heard none of (laughs) y'all yeah and, and the thing is like the thing is it's also because it's royalty like and people when they see it or understand what i'm talking about if they stay true to the comics like Luke Cage again, like yeah. Luke Cage and Black Panther are in a lot of books together. But Luke Cage is a is a, is a straight dude. Like Luke Cage, you know, got his powers in prison. He was already going big. But um, Luke Cage <laughs> is a straight dude where Black Panther is pure no. royalty. He's the, he, he's the richest man in the Marvel universe. He's he's a Jimmy, eloquent. Your imagery, like, the imagery, the imagery piece is very important because it shows a side of Africa that traditional. African American people are are unaware that that even exists. Now, a lot of people will say, "Oh, but it's fantasy." Well, no, there are places in Africa that are highly developed, highly functional, and and wealthy, mm-hmm. and so this becomes a tie into that. So, I, I, I salute Marvel for putting this out, and I'm not mad at. I think the things that we're nitpicking at are really because we're taking shots at the masses. But why? When we know the masses are idiots. So if you can but, enlighten but see, for the me, masses even but, a little bit. See, for me, even my a hopes, little bit. A little bit. Out of this, you know, especially since I'm a, you know, I, I love film. Like, sometimes I wish that I knew how to create film. But mm-hmm. my hopes for this is, you know, even though I know and, and you guys know the, the powers that be behind this don't look like us. But since the whole cast yeah. Yeah. writers, you know, all of those people are black. You know what I'm saying? My hopes are that it can prove that black people and black cast can carry big budget films. But then on yeah. the other oh, side yeah. of that coin, I'm like, man, Marvel, especially these days, don't really flop much no matter what they do. So, so would that really put it on the Marvel brand. 
like, here's the yeah, crazy we would part, have right? to so, we would have to do something like this outside of a, a proven brand, you know, to still get that respect in Hollywood that a black well, cast. Can here's the no, here, here's the crazy part. That's a good, that's that's a good money, point. Man. That's a good point, Jim. I mean, that's a good point there. But I think when you compare it, the numbers. If 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 my feeling is correct, the numbers that this movie is about to do because of the curiosity of other people and because of the support of black people, I think when you compare it, you're going to be able to say, yeah, we know the Marvel badge is automatically going to do a baseline of, of this nine-figure number. But look where this did, you know, where this went, even in comparison to other Marvel movies. Like, when you compare like it, like it, it, like it, like it, it wiped the floor and everything else. But you know what? Like, that's that's the thing. The thing. If they stay What's around that? for it, and, that, and and truthfully, fellas, I haven't heard seen a white person that even mentions this movie. So I'm like, but if those regular white Marvel heads are going to be out there, plus this groundswell of you know black people that's just prideful of the moment, yeah, they could do crazy numbers. But are white people going to see that? Like they go to see other Marvel movies? Yo, that's a great. Oh think? my God, that's the most. Oh, Jim, that's the most important question out there, and it's funny you say that, Dev, because you're not really a comic head, are you? Or 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 are you? No, I I, I read comic books. But I wasn't like Jimmy with it, and plus, and, and yeah. Jimmy Jimmy held out on the stuff. Marvel, we traded comics back day, but Jimmy ain't never bring no Black Panther Jones to trade his pop right. Yo, like, well, that's that's because <laughs> yo, yo, but I tell you, that's yeah, you know, it's funny, it's funny, right? Because these. Yo, it, it's funny, right? Because I knew, I knew that it's funny when you know that your upbringing is a little different. Like you know, you you come from a pro back. When you like get older and you look back on it, you be like, yo, yo, what's wrong with my parents? Anyway, but um, my point though of be awesome like, is I had that, to save like, my it, own money to get these white boys. They they cop. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah. Black. Like Superman ain't cool. Superman ain't cool in here, but you can get this Black Panther book. You can bring that in all day long. But um, <laughs> but it, it's interesting though because I, I think that be Austin, like. Will they go for it? I don't know, like, because that's just one of the take to make the numbers. No, but, but, if, they're, but if, they're, if they don't go for it, they're selling out their Marvel nerd nerdness. Like, I believe the yeah. Marvel nerdness because will trump will trump the racism and the white supremacy in them. I don't know, man. Cause I, I, I've, I've seen some message boards where they said some crazy stuff, man. But I get what you're saying because, like, the the Marvel yeah. nerdism would make them have to see everything because everything's going to tie into you a bigger to. Avengers plot. Yo, anyway. but hold on, though. There, there, there are literal right. Facebook pages out there, right, right uh, which are made right. up which are made up of Yakubians, which are, like, literally, don't go see this movie that we need to fail. I'll show you. I, I saw one um, the other day. Someone screenshotted it, like, yo, what's going on? But So <clears throat> it's interesting, man, but I, I think this movie overall, the conversations that are being had based upon a movie are interesting. Also, another thing that you brought up about the people that made the movie, I'm um, just doing a little research. The executives that Greenland and at Disney were also African American. Like so there's high level executives even at Disney who were behind this, um, who were black. And they were saying that without them this may not have gotten made. So we, we um, I was about to say know, it probably has to, has to be because you had you needed somebody up top to fight for this. Yeah, so like we have people within yeah. within the organization too, so you know, but it's just an interesting conversation overall because a lot of my people who are like the, the people who've been woke, the real woke people, like I see a lot of them criticizing it because they don't see us come to bat for anything else like that. And I get that argument yeah. too. Like, damn, we can't, you know. But, they, but those people make arguments over everything. Like a lot of my woke people from Philly that's was pissed human, last week. That's a, that's a human. That's a human element. That's a human element thing, though. It's like the human being when you take even when you take out black or white. The hu- the average human wants to enjoy a fantasy, like so. It's really you're. It's almost like you're mixing in a, a strong message and giving it to the person the way that they need to receive it, because they don't want to. Mm-hmm. They don't want to get out here and support what's going on in the real world. Yeah. So you got to show it. You got to show them a hero. You Yo, show in the word, in the words of a, uh, in the words of really Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill Lauren Hill said, "Fantasy is what we want, but reality is what we need." A shot to Lauren Hill right. for that bar. But um, like I keep going back to right, Birth though, of a Nation. I just really are. wish we could have had that Black History moment with Birth of a Nation. But then you know they let them, 
you know, bad mouthed the ball about taking some white yams before, yeah. and that. Yeah, they tried to. They tried to. They tried to the me too. They tried to the me too ball yeah. right before it came and out. I, and I think um, if there was a me too character in this movie. I think it would be ignored. I really do at this point. People are so but you know what? excited. I, but I, I think also, it would be I, I also, I also think that the fact that they didn't care. What you say? Yo, but they they tried to hit Michael B for dating a non black woman, but it just, it just doesn't matter. But also, not that it doesn't matter that he did a non black woman. Don't don't quote me on that because I have my feelings on that. But I'm saying that <laughs> it, did, it didn't matter with the mo- <laughs> it didn't matter with the momentum of the movie. Um, you know, because it, this is a Marvel movie. It's a big movie. But I also feel like the slave narrative kind of hurt that one too because there are even black people like. And again, we know that he's a that. freedom fighter. But they're tired of that for one. You have a, you have a certain pe- a certain set of people yeah. who are tired of that, and the other set of people love their master so much, don't even want to see him hurt. They want to still serve him. So, <laughs> you know, that that's an issue too. So the, I mean, the, the question is, is what movie? Ball, this was the last ball, one we saw. This should have been the one that we got. Like, like <laughs> what movie can we make outside of pan, outside of this, and outside of a slave movie where we can really like, like you put said, some numbers yeah. on the board? I got. I got because it was the fantasy. Story, More people the story like that, of the Haitian Revolution. The story of yeah, the Haitian like, Revolution. See, no, no, they don't want to see that, y'all. They ain't ready for that. But there has to be, like, you know, whether it's a love story or whatever, like, you know, Dev said that he loves filmmaking, man. Maybe we need you, we wait for you to make a film that, you know, people could sell or whatever. I mean, I can't make any films. Any film that I've made in my life will probably break up marriages, but, um, you know, uh, <laughs> but there has to be a film outside of Marvel. And you know, outside of the slave narrative, that we Jimmy, get a Jimmy, chance. You know, like, so maybe this is maybe this can co direct and, and co produce a film with my son. son. <laughs> the story of man, the story of man, <laughs> y'all like the same man to Musa would be, would be great. But the funny thing is, if you they tell the story of man to Musa and the story of Tariq, it would change the way history is viewed. So that can't happen. The they story of Tariq, they're Jimmy, not telling that one. I know what I'm going to see in yeah. June. I'm going to see Uncle Drew <laughs> in June. Yeah, <laughs> Uncle Drew. I'm going to see because, Uncle Drew, yo. <laughs> you know, because that's the thing, right? So it's, it's like we have to be able to tell. That's now the thing. That's a, to Dev's point, this may give us the opportunity to tell more stories. So yeah. if this does well, you know, we may we get a little little bit of a leash to try to get our stuff funded and tell our stories. Even though we should be funding our own stuff, but that's even here. No, I'm afraid um, if it do pop it, off. This, they don't have Stan Lee old ass trying to write a new black hero into existence. Yo, and see, that's the thing, right? So there, there, there's, there's another black comic called Raising Dion, which is about a black. It's not, here's the thing about this: it's about a black single mother, um, raising a son who has superpowers and she doesn't know where she got him from. Now I just heard that um Netflix picked that up. Now I don't know if it's based upon the, like um, you know, I, all the I, hype I heard black about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, better, man, they better be. They're gonna give these young black kids self high self esteem. And that and that's the thing about superheroes though, right? So the thing about the superhero genre, so to speak, and, and by the way, um Raising Dion is being executive produced by Michael B. Jordan. But um the thing about superheroes is it does give kids confidence. And I I wanna know when actual um when Halloween comes around. Whether this will make it that's when I'll see if you see little black kids all dressed like uh Black Panther. Even though oh, that's funny. Black, I know it, then they're gonna get. Then they're gonna get off. They can get shot. My son, my son did that last year. So when everybody do that next Halloween, he gonna be like, been there, done that. He gonna be talking trash <laughs> about him. Uh, he did. <laughs> he no, did it before the movie we'll came out. Because <laughs> the, the ill part about Black Panther, I know we all already mentioned this, is like, yo, everybody's black in Wakanda. Like the women is beautiful. Black women, it's like, yo, the bad guys are dope and they're black. Like everybody's <laughs> black. So it's like. It's just going to be interesting to see how this takes, man. I'm looking very excited for it. You know what I'm I mean, and Marvel, go see this movie. shout out to them. Kugler is, is great at what he does. And Marvel, they they, they get it right more times than, than not. So yeah. it's, Here's my it's thing. going to be a banging movie. Yo, Ryan Coogler <laughs> is, is brilliant. Like, I've watched his work with um with Creed, and I watched the um, Fruit Station, right? And I'm dude, like, dude. yo. He's in all Ryan Coogler. And I'm like, yo, I'm sitting there looking at this like, yo, this young boy is brilliant. And then I saw him get interviewed, and I heard him speak, and I was like, yo, he don't write his own bars. He's nice. <laughs> yo, he nice. Yo, he's definitely <laughs> nice. Yo, you ever, seen him, you ever seen him try to speak? It's like, this this the dude that made that? Right. Like, I mean, Aw. I just chalked it up. Like, some people, 
their expression through their art is just is yeah, just on a I different agree. level. They can't express themselves just sitting down talking. Like I gotta, I show I'm you like, better than I'm, I. Can, you know what I mean? I'm sitting there like I, I, I clicked on a Kruger interview and I, I thought he was about to like you know get his China Hasi coats on. My man was like, you know what I'm saying? Because in the day, right, what we do is I'm like, yo, <laughs> you made all this brilliant film. All right. I mean, I'm telling you, that's, really what I, that's, what, that's how I think every time I see Nas in the interview. Like, dude. Yo, when you see Nas, he's like, yo, he's right right even more ironic right right than because it. what well, he does I'm for here, a living I'm is here. still talking. So it's like, he should he should have bars when he talks, like, anyway. Yeah. I don't, I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, he definitely I don't does. get it. But I guess, like uh, you said, some people... Shout out to Jay Electronica. People just express themselves through their art. Right, not bars. Because... I saw Kuzma speak for and I was like, yo, he ain't direct none of these. Yo, but anyway, real talk. Because um, I know Jim got to leave soon. Y'all dudes going to see Uncle Drew or what, man? Yo, I, I, gonna, I, saw, that, I saw the fascinated. trailer, right? And I'm I'm confused. Is that real? I just thought it was a Look, joke. It's, it's, it's real. It's coming out in June. Not got the real. new Lil Rel in it. Tiffany Haddish is in it. My man, I forgot his name from the league, is in it. Shaq, Chris Webber. I've always been fascinated with Uncle Drew because remember they started with the commercials and then they started making little shorts. And I used to yeah. wonder the same thing with the shorts. Like, is this real? Because they had the one where he went to the playground and somebody faked. You know, there was a couple of people in on it. The guy faked like he got hurt. They needed somebody. He came in. He was playing like an old man. And then he started playing like Kyrie. <laughs> and when you looked at the faces that the camera was catching, it looked like it was real. Like they were re- either they were great actors or he was really in the playground giving out buckets, and they didn't know that this wasn't a old man. So I'm no, always they, no, they didn't know. They didn't know. Okay. Uncle Drew, man. They didn't Plus, know. To, to let Ky- to watch Kyrie get down, it's gonna be nasty. But yo, they had hey, legends in dude? this in this preview, man. They had Pee Wee Kirkland. <laughs> what, does do? what does this do? What does this do for Byrie, though? Like, if this goes off, like you know, regardless of how. Because the fact that he got this made, if it is indeed a, a real thing, like, what does this do for him? Like, Continue to I make it like, better than LeBron because he got a real basketball. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is, like, one big Nike ad. Like, I'm like, this isn't real. This is just a Nike ad. It's eventually going to, like, you know, come June, it's going to be, like, a new sneak drops. Well, Uncle Drew wasn't Nike in the first place. Wasn't that Pepsi or something? Or was it? Pepsi. One, one of them jumps, Okay, yeah. so, the, but, so it's the Pepsi jump. You know what? I mean, just from the preview, like, I've – there's, it's been rare that I've seen one of these basketball players actually make a movie and I see the previews and say, yo, I actually want to see that. Like, I know my son would like it. You know, he already, he watches TNT. He likes Shaq because he'd be Shaq in the fool. So, you know, to see Shaq in there, <laughs> the crazy. He likes that too. But it it looks interesting to me. Like, Kevin Durant's movie was trash, Thunderstruck. Yo, that John um, was so trash. That John was so... <laughs> So trash. Lil Bow wow, oh my God, it was trash. Lil Bow Wow. Well, he's Lil Bow Wow. Mike was trash. Um, you know, but but if you think about all the basketball players that have movies that have something to do with basketball, they're basically the same plot though. Somehow somebody loses yeah. their powers. You know, Kevin Durant was mm-hmm. in a slump and switched powers with some white boy in high school. He was dominating high school. You know, like Mike, he got powers when he put on Mike old ass yeah. shoes. Um, Space Jam, <laughs> the Monstars took their power, so it's basically the same yeah. plot. So, but it's the, it looks like something different, you know. It looks like he's gonna put a team together to play in a tournament at the Rucker. That's more, you know, what I'm saying that's that's more in our wheelhouse. Like that's stuff. Well, here's the that thing, we can so, so let me ask you a question, and I, and I know we, did, we probably can, we probably, and I think we may have done this before. I think we did best sports movie. What is the best hoops movie? Just like I was about to say, it ain't, it ain't gonna be up in there. None of them movies in there. What's the best? But um, I mean, you talk about you talk about uh, Jesus Shuttlesworth, um, Fish That Save Pittsburgh. We, we talked about it before. For me, I, I, I'll give you top three right now. For me, it's like, um, Coach Above Carter. The Above the rim is favorite, not best. Um, that's my favorite. But like Coach Carter, Hoosiers, and damn, I'm. I don't even know the. I'm forgetting the name of the Joan. The Joan about uh, basketball. No, the Joan about Ooh. when they beat Kentucky with the five when they started five black dudes. Yo, you you saying that to be correct? You don't think that's the best? You don't think that's the best? Yo, you that's, 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 that's come on, yeah. 
You don't like you that. You don't know the name of the joint. I do, but I you don't know the name of the joint. When we did the show the first time, man, I'm just having a brain fart. I'm old, cuz. <laughs> Jimmy don't know. I forget. You know I forget my kids' names three times a day. Like, this yo, ain't above, the, above the rim, above the rim is that work, yo. My man Birdie was like sending somebody to lay the murder above game down because of a basketball rim. game. I know the school. Chef, wasn't the school like Texas legend. Western or something? I know. The Chef is a legend. Yo, my man uh, Road, Leon, Road to Chef Glory. Is a Road to Glory is what it was called, or Glory Road. Glory Road. I don't know. Something with glory and something yeah. with the street. <laughs> no, who's your Glory Street? No, you who's your the three that I named? Who's your Glory Road and um, Coach Carter? Oh, like, I Coach Carter. Them. But then my favorite is like above the rim. They all real though. Basketball. That's like a cheat code. They all real. That's probably you know that's my movie taste. Stories. You know that's my taste. No, like movie stories. Me, I'm bored. That's probably why I'm dissing people because I'm more into true stories than fantasy. So that's probably why I'm dissing yeah. people about Black Panther. <laughs> See for me, I'm I'm actually I'm actually the other way. I like I like um, fiction because for me, like a lot of times with true story, um, I'm a nerd in the, in, the, in the essence that I start looking up what's real and what's not real, and then it make you piss at the film. Like that didn't even really happen. Then you get <laughs> mad when it when you get mad about so much stuff. But we gotta yeah, holler at yeah, Tobias real realize... quick. He's he threatening us. Yeah, bring bring him <laughs> on. Let's hear what he gotta say. <laughs> we got Tobias on the line. What's going on, Tobias? <laughs> hey man, don't get mad because I saw Jim, Jim. I saw Jimmy on a boat with Blake Griffin and Kyrie, man. I'm trying oh, to no watch days, man. <laughs> no days, dog. No days, dog. dog I, yo, Tobias, Tobias. I ain't eat pork in over thirty years, B. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> B also don't play in the snow. Uh, no, man, I mean, I, I, I. I I had some Chinese food in that, in that time. I had some Chinese food in that time, but no, man. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Hey, hey that Mugu Guy Pond ain't no joke, but uh, here's the thing. All right. <laughs> you know, like, kind of, but, but see, like, I was, I'm excited to watch Black Panther. I've always been a comic head. And, uh, but the thing I like about – my only concern is I hope they don't make Black Panther into the white woman. I hope they don't try to jam any gay people into the movie just for the sake of. And just, and just you know, somebody let him just be – yeah, just let him be the badass that he is. Because my skepticism of the movie ended when they when they end that uh, Civil War movie when the Captain America is like, hey, if Bucky, if they know he's here, they will come for him and say, let them come. I was like, okay, he ain't gonna be no punk in this movie, <laughs> you know. But you know, Black Panther got t- a husband though. Yeah, I know, man. Pro- probably, probably the white <laughs> yeah. guy. But uh, hey, yo, real quick, you know, the pro- real quick. Real quick to all y'all, because a uh, um, shout out to the brother Hank. He's in a, a group chat. He said that, um, in his opinion, Mercy of a Nation really wasn't that good of a movie. Um, it, he said he see, supported it. it. Well, who knows <laughs> that? Movie wasn't go, who knows but, that? But, can I drop this real quick? I saw the Black first weekend in the theater. Was empty, and and nobody Hollywood doesn't care if a movie's good. <laughs> Hollywood doesn't care if a movie's good. All Hollywood care about asses and seats. That's why they kept making Fantastic Four movies. No, no, it was any them, good. Them John, yo, yo, they haven't made a good Fantastic Four movie ever. They all trash. Yeah, and so yeah, I'm my thing is Fantastic Four getting other roles in the Marvel universe because Fantastic Four. <laughs> <Yeah. stuff. laughs> yo, because he's like, yo, yo like, weren't you know, somebody else? Like, how you do that? Yeah, he's he like, yo, this dude. When Captain America, America like, 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 uh, I need the ball uh, to flame or whatever. But what? He Michael was from them, from them Jones too. Yeah, he was. Yo. Oh as yeah, Michael B. Jordan you know, is one of the you say that? Yeah. As a as a Fantastic Four fanatic and fan, watching Fantastic Four movies makes me sad, yo. Like really, really <laughs> sad. Like, like my dog died. Yo, yo it is. It's very oh. sad. It's like it's like it's like watching Pinky pass their prom. But I'm sorry, go ahead though. Because I found you. Yo. And that's the thing, though. Yeah. To Hank's point, to Hank's point, and people have already said this. Even if Black Panther ain't good, they're gonna say it's good anyway. So it's like, why couldn't we get behind yeah. that like that? People won't know it ain't good if you don't. Because you know, they, have enough, black, they have enough black excellence in it, man. You know it's all about the black excellence. You know, you know what I say, though, also. You know what I say, also. Go ahead. I, 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 don't, I don't want nobody saying here no black folks. Well, I don't know where the movie playing at. Or, you know, I don't know how to get there. So, and so <laughs> that's the stuff I think people talk about. It's like, see, the birth of a nation. The thing is, the, the thing with that movie was there was no white guy to save the day, like like Free State of Jones. Yeah. There was no no Matthew. white savior. 
Yes, and so that and see, a lot of them don't want to see. Remember the old saying where they said a lot of them didn't want to leave the plantation. That's the way it is because the thing is that was a black man who pretty much made it with mostly his money. You got black actors to put that money in. You saw how they try to trash his name, and black people a lot of them went along with it. But when it's something and like, but let's say I'm not knocking Tyler Perry, but you know they ain't trashing him. They ain't trying to say he did this or that. So so sorry, I, I just believe. Here, Tobias, here, I'm going to break it down for you real quick. I'm going to tell you the reason. The reason is because most of us, most of us, movies that poop on black men. So they love Even beyond that, Tobias, Tobias, most of us are still slaves and don't know it. Like, we're essentially dogs, right? You ever, you ever see you get a dog from the pound and you train that dog, right? And you train that dog. So the dog may try to run away. So you tie him, you tie him up and you train him and you feed him. And the next thing you know, the dog becomes part of your family. And then guess what? You don't have to leave a leash on them no more. So they took the leashes off, but guess what? That's because they don't have the leashes no more. Because we're trained dogs. Own. We roll over for masses. Ma- ma- massa feeds us. Masses make sure we well fed. He takes us out, lets us go poop or whatever. But we ain't going nowhere. We ain't, we ain't trying to, like, you know, go back to our habitat because we're dogs. Um, and that's not everybody, but some people who don't understand that, that's what hey, it is. You, so you, that kind of movie you is never right, work in that gotta run. I'm speechless. You got the right, but I got to run, man. Hey, thanks for taking my call, fellas. All right, no doubt. Salute, salute. All right, <laughs> go, go say what's up to Master. <laughs> Listen, though. Everybody's like, um, speaking of Master, here you go. He's like, speaking of Master, he must have, he must have heard, heard me talking. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what kind of shit are you listening to, Tobias? <laughs> Yo, because here's the, here's the thing, though, that, like, the, the way people were jumping behind us, they're, like, literally wearing African garb in the theater. Like, I see some people That's who have the yeah, show now. Them, like, I'm just sitting I'm, back I'm, with like, my lips balled up, like, like. Like, 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 like I'm, I'm in. He, he's at he's at the early show. He's at the early show. He just texted me. He was like, "Yo, look at this." And there's people in the theater, garbed up. Like, literally, I, I thought it was a joke on social. People are like garbed up, like literally. Like you know. So, yeah. and to be Austin's point, man, if we can keep 15 percent of these people, man, still focused and still uh, woke AF, then maybe we'll do good, man. So it's about can we keep people uh, with the same mentality, and only time will tell. Man, we ain't even talk about them showing this this uh, film on the continent. Man, if the continent gets a hold of this, uh oh, it's on the continent. Yo, dog. Waji, shout out to Waji who has written some articles for World Room Sports. He posted pictures of 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 he and his wife going to see it on the continent. So it's, Yo, uh, man, that's crazy, man. On and pop. Let's see what I. I'm interested to see what the numbers look like. I'm interested to see like what happens after. I'm surprised. Like, Trump, I'm surprised Trump and Jeff Sessions haven't banned it. <laughs> Yo, they might after this weekend. I, I just want to see like um if we make it, we make Whoa. the Stokely call by the show. What's, what's going to happen? Yeah. All right. We'll come so, to Stokely, uh, little Bobby Hutton. I guess we can uh, roll on after we get the stat of the week. People are like, "Yo, where the hell is the spokes?" Yeah, the stat of the week, though, by the way, because we already talked about Uncle Drew, the stat of the week is DeAndre Jordan. My man had a 30-point game, right? And it's not just that he had a 30-point game. This is his 724th NBA game, and he finally cracked the 30-point mark. Um, and it took him the longest of any player. It took him the longest of any player to crack the 30-point mark this far in his career. Um, that's an interesting stat because I never even thought about. It. I never even thought about whether he scored thirty. Like, I don't no, know it, was, it was it was one player, one player. Um, Who was the one player? Took longer than him. Uh, Samuel Dallenberg. Oh, you know what? Theo, Samuel Theo, was it? No, Samuel. I was about to say Theo Rattler. Right? Theo Samuel Dallenberg. Um, yes. Dallenberg. Uh, and we know it's been down there. Wilden Burt's. Uh, initial thirty-point performance came in his seven hundred fifty-fourth career game. <laughs> He's in a Might G-League. Only used to disrespect Might that man. Dev <laughs> used to disrespect that man. Dev next to his face and call him Wilden Burt. Look at Wilden yeah, Burt. He was wild as hell. Look at Wilden Burt. Samuel Wilden Burt. Yo, so that's an interesting <laughs> stat right there, man. You know what I mean? DeAndre Jordan. Shout out to uh, shout out to uh, the Cavs player who said uh, they asked if they, they used DeAndre Jordan. He said he used Montel Jordan. And then Montel straight responded. But like I got five uh, points and five fouls for y'all. It's about the same anyway. thing DeAndre got for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, not no more. Not no more. <laughs> yeah, he getting thirties from here on out. And you know how the, you, you know how the NBA is. His uh his his agent probably made a phone call that next day. Like what we gonna do? Like uh, damn, dog. 
<laughs> we got to <laughs> Max. <laughs> Quickly. Anyway, gentlemen, listen, man, I'm about to get out of here myself to go see this Black Panther movie, man. You know, I got to support the cause, man. But uh, y'all have a great rest of the show. You know what I mean? Talk about no the all weekend. All right, y'all. I'll, I'll, see, you. I'll see you tomorrow. Good good brother. Brother. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll see you. Brave those highways and be safe. You uh, already right, know. Too. I see y'all in the morning. All right, take it. Take your AR-15 to the theater just in case. You know they might try to purge y'all. They might try to. That's, yeah. that's that yo. That that is real down here. That's what yo. That's real. AB. Like, cause you know you you know where we go for our our war room sports retreat up in the mountains. It's not really a place where we need to be out in the open. Like we go to our little cabin and we stay there for the weekend. So you know how we do that. Cause you know, you've done it. Everybody was excited about the movie and like, y'all want to do, y'all want to go see that while we out here. I'm like, you crazy. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like in that area, man, you really are risking being purged. Like whoever's in that movie theater, they know it's going to be black people. Like that theater might not make it. <laughs> the one theater in that area that's going to show that might not make it. Like, I'm I'm not trying to. Nah. <laughs> nah. They fire, they fire bombing. They fire bombing. I, yeah, I would be, and, and we're trying to see no MAGA boys run up in not, there with the with the blickies. <laughs> it's not a, it's not really a joking matter in this day and age and in this climate. If a theater gets firebombed, I'm not surprised. In the least. I'm saddened, but I'm not yeah. surprised. You know, people are going to try to take it back to the, the olden days um, with this whole thing. They see black people excited about something. That's how things go down. All right. Um, oh, man, somebody just told me that they were on hold for like 20 minutes. I know Tobias was complaining. Um, we're sorry. I don't think I don't think anybody saw a, a number on the switchboard. Um, if you were, remember, you got to press one so that we know that you're waiting to get on the line. If you don't press one, the, the number will just be chilling there, and we think you're just trying to listen from your phone. So hopefully, if you did press one and we missed you, then excuse us. You know, try to hit us back. We'll we'll try to get to everybody who calls in. Um, all right, so real quick before we move on to this NBA All-Star Weekend, um, Y'all can check out our website at warroomsports.com. If you want to call in and speak with us about any NBA All-Star Weekend or just NBA topics in general, dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline at numbers 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted, but if you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. All right, NBA All-Star Weekend 2018 is upon us. And our all-star talk is brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence. Top quality, results-driven websites at incredibly affordable prices. And yes, financing options are available so if you don't have the whole thing, you can put something on it. <laughs> um, just visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them that the boys over at War Room Sports sent you. All right. So, B, before we get into the actual festivities for All-Star Weekend, I got a few things I want to rap to you about. In basketball in general, um, a report came out saying that the 76ers have now employed the help of VR goggle technology to help Markel Fultz, um, you know, with his struggles trying to get his shot back after his uh, shoulder injury that we clearly don't know everything about. So basically what they're doing um, – He's he's wearing the VR goggles, and they're trying to get the whole. They're trying to get in-game situations, but not have a bunch of people around him where he can, you know, try to get comfortable with situations and shooting the ball off instinct 
and not thinking about it too much. So they're just throwing them in an arena with the VR goggles and giving them um, a lot of scenarios to play from. Um, you know, it's 2018. Training has become very technological. Can you see the benefits of this in his situation? Absolutely. I absolutely can see the benefits of this. Um, what I am as a 76ers fan, like now, is uber concerned that we don't know what the hell happened to Markel yeah. Fultz. It is obvious like right that this now, dude just can't pick up his arm. <laughs> when, he got, when he shot the ball in college, it was, you know, not I wouldn't call it a beautiful stroke, but it was a, it was a, it was a nice stroke, pause. And it, it did, had, it had fundamental mechanics, you know. <laughs> yeah, it went. It, yo, my man shot has a hitch in it that I can't describe as anything other than retarded. And I'm sorry for the folks <laughs> that would be offended by that, but like his <laughs> arm is retarded. He has a retarded arm. And a retard, it's retardation in his shoulder. Like, and he's it pushing it. It's a, he's and pushing he's it, pushing and then there's a hit. And no one is telling us. And, and, and the this reason how I can push him the shot is because he doesn't have any the torsion in his shoulder. It, 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 he doesn't have, there, something's missing. Like, there's a piece of his shoulder that you and I might have. Now, we older, so it may be worn a little bit, but it's there. <laughs> we might he's not have it no more. something in his shoulder. <laughs> Yo, he's it's not there. This in is, his this is it's missing. This is how I can describe it, B. Um, now, my son has a little hoop on the top of his closet door in his room. Now, he's about three foot nine, so he can shoot on this hoop, you know, and he can work on fundament, fundamental mechanics. He can shoot it up because he's so short. Now, you and I are trying to shoot on uh, – a closet door court with the ceiling only being about eight to eight and a half feet tall, which means there's only a good foot, if that, between the hoop and the ceiling, we would have to shoot a different way unless we're shooting from our knees. If we're trying to stand up and shoot, we're going to have to push the ball off our chest and kind of have a little itch. That reminds me of Markel Fultz's jump shot right now. And in the NBA, he's not getting that off on nobody. I mean, Kevin... Martin got his off, but that's just because that was his natural shot. So he's practiced all his life, you know, trying to get that shot off against other players. Kevin Martin, and, Kevin Martin was also six eight, so a lot of and he the didn't have a hitch. Guarding him, he, yeah. he didn't have the hitch. He just had to he push. Over. He did. So at least he pushed it fast. Like this dude has to stop midway through the push, <laughs> and then. Like, push again. Like, something was really wrong with this dude. And the conflicting no, situation shot coming out of his hand, Chuck, man, making me sick. His shot has the, Chuck Bark, has the Charles Barkley golf swing hitch. Yes, it does. But let me let me tell you, this was the Sixers' motivation um, to use the dark goggles. They said, uh, uh, they said they wanted him to be able to visualize the mechanics he'll use in the game to remember how easy it once was for him to rise up with the ball and shoot from anywhere on the court and to be able to do so without the glare of the cameras or other people around him. Um, With pressure coming down on him from all angles, uh, turning a part of his job into a video game is basically one way to relieve the stress of the situation. Yeah, he is 19 years old, so if you can train this dude in a video game, (laughs) it's probably easy to get him out there and and motivate it to – to work and do this stuff. But I mean, I hope not even just because he's a Sixer and I'm a, and we're 76ers fan. I just hope for, you know, for his sake, like he had a, this dude was drafted with a lot of promise ahead of him played well in the few games he played in the uh, summer league before he sprained his ankle. But yeah, I, I just hope he can get it together, man. I hope this isn't a confidence shatterer. You know, because if if it, if it becomes mental, we all know that sometimes that has a stronger effect on people and a, and a bigger impact than even if you had some kind of physical hitch. So it's like if if your shoulder's healed, if it heals 100%, he can't let it get in his head because just like somebody coming off of a knee injury or something, you might be scared to fully plant and cut on that thing, even though the doctor tells you you can do it you just might be afraid because you know how it felt when you popped that thing the first time. So 
Shout out to Markel. I don't even think it's that. I, I think this dude is missing important equipment that God gives you in his shoulder, man. I think something's really wrong, man. I'm nervous yeah. for the dude. Has nothing to do with being a Sixers player. I am so nervous for dude. Yeah, because he popped something that that's that's just not right, and and they're not telling us. I don't. I really don't think the Sixers know because he does a lot of training on his own. I think it was something that he even tried to hide from them, like the severity of the situation. So we'll we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But um, uh, Steve Kerr the other night allowed his players to coach themselves during a 46 point blowout of the Phoenix suns. And a lot of people, including Jared Dudley um, is saying he thinks that that showed a lack of respect for the suns. Do you think it was disrespectful to allow the players to coach themselves in the game? Um, I think it was competitively disrespectful but I'm the guy to ask because I don't see anything wrong with competitive disrespect. Like, if if you are able to score, if you're a football, I'm, I'm using another sport here. If you're a football team and you're able to amass a hundred points on me, then it's on me to stop you. Like, I don't believe in bush league. I don't believe, yo, if you don't like somebody to dance on you, don't let them score. You don't want somebody to allow their players to coach on you, play harder, play better, make it a serious game. No, see, I'm 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 there with you. I I like if you ask me, is this disrespectful? I tell you, hell yeah, it's disrespectful. But I'm 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 <laughs> like like you said, like do something to earn respect. You know what I'm saying? If you're not getting drubbed by 40, 50 points, then maybe he wouldn't try to, you know prolong his players' careers by making sure they get into the coaching game afterwards in the middle of your game. So you, you you just have to you have to be better. Like there's a lot of situations in sports that you can deem as disrespectful, but at the same time, just like you said, B, these are a lot of these situations I'm not gonna feel sorry for you. I can admit that it's disrespectful. Yeah, just like when you get in the score run up on you. You know <laughs> the yeah. anti Andy Reid coaches out there. That are gonna run it up on you. Yeah. Okay, stop them. Stop it. Yeah, he disrespect you. You get but... you get millions of dollars. You get millions of dollars, and you know who you're disrespecting by being able to be beaten like that. You're disrespecting your fan base that that supports you by being that that trash. So get your life together. And people only do what you allow them to do. So the Phoenix Suns were bad enough that they allowed. <laughs> The, um, the disrespect, the worry to come in there and 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 disrespect him, yeah. Right. Yeah, so you know, get your life together. I mean, Dudley is one of those. Sometimes he's outspoken. He, he says stuff, but um, I don't know. He had Draymond and and Andre Iguodala leading huddles during the timeout. Um. <laughs> You're down 46, man. It's like, it's whatever. But uh, what Jared Dudley said exactly, he said, quote, it shows a lack of respect for an opponent. And maybe right now we don't deserve respect. So at least he threw that in there. Um, when you when you keep getting beat by 40, teams won't respect you. But it's up to us to change that. So it seems like even though Dudley spoke out about it, he was basically saying the same thing that we said. Um, Kerr said it had nothing to do with me being disrespectful. It had to do with me trying to reach my team. I have not reached them for the for the last month. They're tired of my voice. I'm tired of my voice. It's been a long haul these last three years. I wasn't reading them, and we thought, you know, it was probably a good night to pull a trick out of the hat and do something different. So, yeah, I mean, people can experiment and do different things when you're not providing any, uh, you know, any fight. So get over it. Like Dudley said, if we stop getting drugged by – 40 and 50 points, then people won't have the opportunity to to be disrespectful. Um, your man, Ray Allen, one of your favorite players of all time. I'm being facetious if you guys don't know. Uh that could be farther from couldn't be farther from the truth with B. Austin, but he wrote a very lengthy Instagram post praising and congratulating Paul Pierce on uh getting his jersey retired in Boston. 
um, the other day. And I'll read some of the excerpts from it, um, and then I'll get your thoughts on it. He said, uh, despite what you may have heard or read or what is rumored, there's nothing but love. Paul and I are more interested in building bridges than putting up walls. To, uh, to Paul, number 34, congratulations on having your number raised up to the rafters. I salute you for your commitment to the city of Boston and to us, the 2008 NBA champions. Hashtag the truth. And that, that I just read like the, the last part of it. It's really, really long. He started out talking about the team and doing the unthinkable and going from last to first and winning a chip. And he named most of his teammates, Paul, Kevin, Rajon, Tony Allen, PJ Brown, Sam Cassell, and all of those guys. Um, he spoke about how over the last few years, he's been berated, lambasted, and had his name smeared, um, but then said, you know, it's nothing but love. So what are your thoughts on, on, cause he wasn't at the ceremony. He probably wasn't invited, but he wasn't at the ceremony, but he wrote a very, very long Instagram post uh, to the truth. Um, it can be, it can be analyzed in a couple of different ways. Um, I'm sure our fans and supporters are expecting me to just come in and talk about race, sexuality, and cowardice on the court. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, it was noble of him. Uh, if he really wanted to build a bridge, the proper bridge building technique would have been for him to go to the ceremony, talk to Paul Pierce face to face, man to man. Even uninvited? Clear the air. I mean, they would have let him in. Um, even uninvited. Even 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 uninvited because he's a champion of a Boston Celtic champion and and to a much, much, much lesser degree, a Boston, do you want to call Ray, Ray Allen a Boston legend? I mean, he did win a ring there, but he expected. And he also, not, but, but, well, New England, because he did go to UConn as well. Um, maybe not just Boston, but the New England area from Connecticut on up. Um, so, I, I mean, I think they would have let him in the building. They probably couldn't have stopped Ray John Rondo from putting hands on him, but they would have let him in the building. Oh, and I think I may have lost B. Austin and <laughs> and all of that, but yeah, I mean, I think it was a classy move uh, about by Ray Allen. I would label it as that because, in truth, you know, whether or not you bang with Ray, whether or not you berate him yourself for the decision he made to leave his team and go to who was building up to be their arch rival at the time, um, you know, the the team that. LeBron and Wade and Bosch form just to kind of get over that hump and beat the Celtics, you know, so whatever you think of that, you know, it was still, it was still a classy move for Raider to reach out um, and at least try to start on the road of creating peace between he and his 2008 championship teammates. Um, B. Austin's back with us, but um, yeah, whatever you think of him, you know, it was a good, good move that he reached out. I don't know what it'll do for those guys he, he, in the he future. He's got to start at the top, and I think that Paul Pierce is the best way for him to start because KG doesn't want to acknowledge that Ray Allen was ever born. <laughs> um, so you start with – and the problem with that is I think KG and Paul Pierce are kind of the OGs of the situation, and they still got sh- young shooters out in the streets, a.k.a. Ray John Rondo, Big Baby, and Tony Allen, will put that work in for their OG. So, you know, if uh, Paul Pierce can mend that fence, then then I think some of them may come around and uh, it'll, all get, it'll all get solved. But I think it was classy. I think it was a good move. But I also think he still, if he was really serious about bridge building, he could have attended the ceremony back, you know, backstage and, um, and out of Skyview said, it Skyview said, plus Ray Allen got robbed of the 20, 2008 finals MVP and Paul Pierce is a scrub that found an opportunity. You tripper. <laughs> what? I don't know. You're out of your mind. Paul Pierce, a scrub. Yo, Ray, Paul, Paul Pierce is better than Ray Allen. I didn't say more. I, I think a lot of people better. forget because the fact was, you know, Danny Ainge had put nothing around Paul Pierce since, since um, 
Antoine Walker left. Um, so the year before these guys came, you know, the Celtics were terrible. Doc was on his way to being fired. Danny Ainge probably was, you know, next on the chopping block until he pulled, you know, the trade that he pulled. But let's not forget that as the lead dog before, Paul Pierce and, and Antoine Walker did lead this team to an Eastern Conference Finals appearance. So it's not like he was just straight garbage and then all of a sudden these guys came and he got successful. So these guys came and he yeah, got yeah, yeah. successful he got anywhere he'd ever Paul, reached before. Paul, Paul Pierce is Paul Pierce. He's no scrub. Paul, Paul Pierce was 23 to 24, 5 and 5 every season. Win, lose, or draw. So I don't want to hear about him being a scrub. And and Ray Allen had all the talent in the world and decided to say, no, I'd rather not be talented. I just want to be a specialist. I just want to stand here and shoot. I don't want to use all the other God-given gifts I want. And I want to complain to referees about Kobe. But that's neither here nor there, man. Uh, classy move. Hopefully those brothers are on the way to reconciliation and we can all learn for them, from them. But he was a coward for the way he left because that's like me leaving – the war room and going to some other inferior show like sports center or his and hers or something like that. Like I couldn't. And, and then expecting my brothers to, like, nah, can't I'm going to a younger version of us. Like, Oh, they're younger. They about to, they about to take over that spot. Yeah. It's cowardice. Especially if it's somebody, you know, we've been beefing with and basically in the basketball world, a rivalry is basically beef. Um, shout out to Casey Mack. He was saying when we were talking about the Warriors, he said the Warriors are setting themselves up for getting attacked by goons in the league. The NBA already thinks uh, Golden State is soft. Yeah. Uh, the the question is, are there any more goons left in the league? And is there any mentality in the league that would, you know, think that this is a situation that calls for goons? I think 15, 20 Matt years ago, Barnes, they definitely Matt would have been Barnes. gooned up on a nightly basis. But these days, are there any goons left? <laughs> Matt Barnes retired. Tony Allen is inconsequential. And Zebo is 40. What goons? <laughs> there are no goons. I mean, it's not even goons on people's bench these days. It's, it's crazy. It's people... You know what? There's people that see Blake Griffin get disrespected, and they think that equates to to Boone. No, Blake Griffin is just a woman. <laughs> yeah, woman, they got game though. I'm gonna defend you, Blake. Still can play. All right. So, um, are the are the Cavs back in the driver's seat because they've been dominating ever since they made the the trade last week? Like the trade on paper. You know, unless you're a basketball purist, maybe didn't move the needle that much, but it, they they seem on paper they they've seemingly gotten much better as a cohesive unit. You know, once it gets the time to gel, but they've been playing pretty well ever since. I can't do it by myself. It's too hard. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think they're a better team. I think they're now good enough to. Um, to really slide into that first spot, take it away from Boston. But this team doesn't do well, this Toronto doesn't right now. Golden. Boston already lost it. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, this team doesn't beat Toronto. Uh, this team now can beat Toronto and Boston, but they don't beat Golden State, um, Houston, uh, or OKC. So, you know, so, it is what so, they, I mean, so, so, they so got So basically Ron the trade – save LeBron's streak of going to the NBA Finals, pretty much. Because that's all he needs. All he needs is participation. He doesn't need the actual championship. He just needs a participation trophy, and, and that will solidify his uh, his standing with his minions. Now, this is a question I need to ask because LeBron's biggest supporter, Nick Wright, kind of alluded to this, but, of course, he said it in a different way. And I'm sitting here wondering – I'm like, do you just know that you just said your hero quit? Because he talked about how before the trade, LeBron, you know, he he was he was a little bit different um, in his play because he probably was down on the team and the direction that they were going in. He talked about how he re-energized himself 
and he's playing with like renewed confidence and renewed energy now that the trade has been made. So did he admit that LeBron basically quit when the going got tough? You know, because a lot of people will point to his stats where he's still averaging this, this, and that. But we all know LeBron James is just that good physically that he's going to put up numbers. Like, we always talk about that game five against Boston back in, what was it, 2008 or whatever year that was. His body language, all the body language readers, his body language would tell you the way he was walking up and down the court looking like, meh. Look like he basically quit in that game. But at the end of the day, you know, he still damn near had a triple-double and a diesel triple-double at that because that's just what he does. And, you know, most of the time quitting doesn't happen until the fourth quarter. But in, in saying the stuff that he said, and, of course, not knowing that he's saying it, did Nick Wright pretty much acknowledge that LeBron had quit on his team until the organization did something about it in the form of a trade? Neck, uh, neck right. First of all, you're mispronouncing his name. There's a, it's an E, not an I. Neck right. Um, <sighs> neck right is is disgusting uh, in his love and adoration for a, a younger man than him. Um, he definitely admitted to to LeBron quitting, um, and it and it's been more than once that he's alluded to it, and and many of the pundits have been alluding to. It. LeBron's dissatisfaction, and it's almost like he packed it in to kind of play a game with management to force their hand to get a right now fix it, get him some help, because he couldn't do it alone. He can't do it by himself. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, and Casey Mack said he thinks Cleveland's going overboard on the celebrating. And then he said, you know, y'all know I'm an, uh, an apologist on LeBron, but he thinks the MVP race shouldn't include him this year because of his I play when I want to attitude. Um, I, I mean, that's a, that's a great point. That's bigger. But, than you know, there's there's never going to be a year, at least no time in the foreseeable future, where LeBron's not legitimately in the um, MVP race, but. You know, it's a, it's a legitimate point to be made, but nobody will ever give any, you know, credence to it. He's going to be in the race. Well, yeah, definitely. definitely. All righty. So um, let's get – oh, one last thing before we get into actual All-Star Weekend things. Your man LeVar Ball says <laughs> Lonzo will not re-sign with the Lakers when the time comes if the Lakers do not sign – both of his brothers. This is a part of LeVar's plan to get um, all three of his sons on the Lakers. What do you say about this? Like, this, this is one of those things where you, where you ask, like, do you think Lonzo, because they've gone along with a lot of the stuff that their dad has said and done kind of quietly so far because none of it is this big in the grand scheme of things. But do you think Lonzo Ball would really not re-sign with the Lakers? If they don't sign his brothers, do you think he's down with this Brody plan? Uh, I think uh, right now, today, his fear of his father, uh, he would, but I don't know where he'll be in three years, which is when this actually would come into play. And and for our um, for our listeners, our supporters, our fans, our beloved brothers and sisters that support War Room Sports, uh, we appreciate y'all. And a lot of you guys have been big baller brand. LeVar Ball supporters. And so one question from the Hot Block Commander, a.k.a. B. Austin, to y'all. Are you guys ready to admit that LeVar Ball is an F-U-C-K boy? Hashtag. (laughs) Are y'all ready to admit that? Because a lot of you guys had a ton of excuses and a ton of – and I was real early. I was earlier than my bros in identifying exactly what LeVar Ball is. And I got a little bit of criticism, a little bit of heat. You're not supporting a brother. You're not supporting. Yo, this dude is an FEC cowboy, man. He is absolutely, utterly ridiculous. And his sons are either scared of him or they just don't know how to be men. Because at a certain point, you've been drafted to the franchise of your dreams getting to play a child's game that you love at the highest level, 
you're not really that talented. I mean, you're good. Don't get me wrong. You're good enough to be in the league, and you're and you're an okay. You're you will be an okay to 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 decent player, I believe. But you're not worth the headache that you bring along, the baggage, which is also why there's talk. There's starting to be rumblings, especially with Brandon Ingram playing so good at the one because they put Brandon Ingram at the point guard position, and, and he's averaging, since uh, Lonzo Ball going down, he's averaging 20, uh, 6, and 5. No, 20, 25 and 6. 20 points, 5 boards, 6 assists. Like, there's, a, there's, there's trouble brewing on the horizon, and people want Lonzo to stand up publicly to his dad. And he don't. He won't. And it's it's alienating his teammates. Like this is this stuff is is you can't write this, man. This is soap opera, man. Dude, you have a you have a multi million dollar job. You've got a baby on the way, and you're busy letting your dad live vicariously through. You need to tell that Wait, man to shut Lonzo up. Lonzo got a baby on the way. Thousand dollar a month fight. Did I notice? Yeah, he got a baby on the way. Nah, you know he got a white girl pregnant. Um. <laughs> The yeah, if you need to give your dad a $30,000 a month stipend and tell him, look, leave me alone. Uh, leave me alone. I don't know how I missed this. We talk about them all the time. I know Hank yeah, going to be like, how you missed that? I'm sure Hank talked about it. All right, so no, this is Hank just is one the, more Hank thing. Is the baby. Hank is the baby's godfather. <laughs> no, this is this is going to be one more thing. Like, I mean, Lonzo's not even playing right now due to injury, but this is going to be one more thing as soon as the cameras and the microphones get in his face. One more thing that he's going to have to answer to every night until the media is satisfied, you know, that wasn't a part of his own doing. That was something that his dad said that he's going to have to answer for. So, I mean, that's the only, you know, there's, there's for me, there's good and there's bad with LeVar Ball. There's ups, there's downs. This is definitely one of the negative things. Um, when he kind of kind of goes overboard, especially you're going overboard. This is basically criticism of your son's employer. Like you're giving them, you're threatening them. You're giving them ultimatums earlier in the season. You're you're trashing his coach. Like these are people that he has to see and deal with every day. But you're out here just running your mouth, making the situation awkward for him. But yeah, as long as they never step up like men and and tell pops to chill. It's, it's just going to be like this. So we shall see how it happens. But um, Lonzo will be uh, signing autographs during All-Star Weekend. But to get a, 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 a an autograph from Lonzo Ball, it's going to cost you $199 to get um, any kind of merchandise signed. Uh, let me see the, the actual details on this. He's going to be at the Puente Hills Mall in the city of Industry, which is about 22 miles east of the Staples Center. Um, he's going to be there Saturday afternoon um, signing uh, signing autographs on whatever merchandise that you and memorabilia that you want um, for $199. And for $10 more, you can get your signed memorabilia authenticated by Beckett Witness Certification. So basically, you know, <laughs> that for ten dollars more is basically like a uh damn a notary public where somebody gonna witness it and they're gonna give you a little certificate saying that this is authentic because we <laughs> yeah. have them sign it. Yeah. Everybody yeah, else for hundred and ninety nine. I held Lonzo balls I held Lonzo Ball's balls. It's on camera, I got it certified. <laughs> the funny part about this is, you know, you and I both saw fans who was, you know, calling this fake news and saying, oh, no, Lonzo's not even like that. But I'm like, what have they been following over the – like, it doesn't matter what Lonzo is like and what Lonzo wants to do. If, if LeVar Ball sets the price and LeVar this Ball does this, then Lonzo isn't going to – you know, he doesn't really have a choice. But how can you say, Yo, oh, please. this don't sound like something Lonzo would do when the autograph version of his $500 shoes costs $1,000? So basically here, if you go see him at the Puente Hills Mall, you're actually getting a discount 
on his John Hancock. So, you know, if you were willing to pay an extra five for some already expensive shoes, you better go down to that mall and get them joint signed for 200 and, and save $300 in the process. Big baller, you know, big baller right brand there. is turning into big, big baller brand is turning into big baller brand. It's falling, brother. <laughs> and um, Yo, I'm gonna Casey I'm gonna, Mack I'm turning gonna, over a whole new leaf yeah, tonight. Yeah. He said, "I can't defend yeah, Levar yeah. anymore. His son's co-signed with this foolishness." What I don't understand is he has not one time been accountable for anything he says, and that's the, that's that's one yeah. of the criticisms that I've had from the start. Like the things that you say. You don't have to be the one, you know, you can write that check, but you don't have to cash it. Yeah. Like, your son has to cash to every million-dollar check that you write, and that's not fair. It's not fair. I'm going to tell you one of the biggest issues and actually the saddest, and you can argue me whether this is a fact or not, but to me it's a fact. The reason that this is all going to come crashing down and that there, it, it's all going to burn fast is because there's no substance to any of what is being done in this entire freak show called the Ball Family. There's no substance there. Like, there's no character work being done. The patriarch of the family, his entire hustle, because it is a hustle at this point, is a coon shuck and jive look at me Move so it's like whenever the needle starts to sink a little bit, or 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 the pendulum swings a little away from them on the attention meter, he just says something crazy or does something crazy. Some of it I believe he actually means like this this comment about you know his his other two boys who who have no chance to even sniff the NBA. His other two boys having to be signed wherever Alonzo is like some of the stuff I think he believes it. But but more dangerous, there's no substance behind the brand. There's no substance behind the character. There's no substance behind the action. It's all just an attention grab. The entire thing is an attention grab, and the foundation is based on a, on a mediocre to okay player's talent who is beginning to cost more than what he's worth because free agents – aren't going to come to L.A. and deal with it. So now you're putting Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson in a quandary because they're set to go after LeBron, Paul George, and all of these dudes. These dudes ain't coming to ball with Lonzo and dealing with his dad. They can kick Rob. Lonzo's I, I, I still think he could be a better player than you give him credit for, like what you're saying his potential is. Um, he just has to find a way to get out of that shadow and focus on what he needs to do. Like he has some games where you see it like, okay, I see why they were excited about you. But then he, you know, he, he has some games where you're like, yo, <laughs> like was this dude, but, um, Brandon, Brandon I mean, Ingram has been playing the one it's been proven, even though he, you know, he can't shoot, he can't throw a rock in the ocean, you know, throughout his first half of his rookie season it was kind of proven statistically that the team is better when he's on the court. Now, whether that's coincidence or that's really him, you know, the eye test can only tell you that, but you know, statistically it's kind of been proven, but we'll we'll get into more of that as the season goes on, man. Let's, let's predict some of these, well, all of these all-star weekend festivities. And let's start with the Mountain Dew kickstart rising stars game. Um, on Friday night, and this game is the world team versus the U.S. team. The world team has Bogdan Bogdanovic, Dylan Brooks, Joel Embiid, Buddy Heald, Larry Markinen, Jamal Murray, Frank Niklikina, uh, DeMontis Sabonis, Dario Saric, and Ben Simmons. So the world team, like the Sixers, are actually lucky to have, you know, like all of this talent that we have on the team now. From trust in the process, it's they're worldly. all from somewhere else. Worldly. And you know where they get, you know, I mean, you know where Brett Brown is from. He He's from that San Antonio Spurs line where, you know, their team mm-hmm. is just a myriad of dudes from all over the world. And, and, it, and it worked out for them for a very long time. So that's the world team. You got the U.S. team with Lonzo Ball, Malcolm Brogdon, 
Jalen Brown, John Collins, Chris Dunn, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, Donovan Mitchell, Dennis Smith Jr., Jason Tatum, Turian Prince, De'Aaron Fox. So like the world team has a lot of Sixers representatives, the U.S. team has a lot of Lakers representatives because these are two franchises who are in rebuild mode and, you know, they have a lot of young talent that they've been able to draft. Um, who do you see winning this game and who do you see as the game's MVP? The world, Craig. The world. Yeah, MVP. Um, MVP, Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid. Okay, I'm going to go this should be a good game, though. But I'm going to go I, – I think the world has is more skilled and the U.S. team, you know, got – Has more – I mean, a little more athleticism. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with the world as well. I don't think uh, Joel Embiid is going to get the MVP because I don't think he's going to play that much because you have to remember Joel Embiid is a real all-star. So he's not going to blow his whole load in this game, especially when yeah. he barely – he's just yeah. now starting to play back-to-backs for his own team in Philadelphia. So I don't think he's going to – and I don't think the Sixers organization is going to let him play major minutes in either one of these games. So with that being the case, I think he's going to try to impress more against the, the varsity uh, guys on Sunday rather than these dudes. So he's going to give a couple dream shakes out. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Dario Saric because I think Dario might have a bigger chip on his shoulder because he probably should have been the rookie of the year last year and it was given to Malcolm Brogdon from the Bucks. So I'm gonna go with Dario Saric as the MVP and I think unless Simmons is trying to go out there and get it himself, I think he'll play a big part into helping Dario get that. Um, Unless he, you know, breaks it out for a less serious game, you don't have to worry about Ben Simmons taking a lot of jump shots. So he might get into the lane a lot and kick out to Dario to uh, help his point total at the end of the night. So uh, let's go to Saturday night. All-Star Saturday night has three events now, of course, the Taco Bell Skills Challenge, the JBL three-point contest, and the Verizon Slam Dunk. Real quick on the Taco Bell Skills Challenge, Joel Embiid is a part of that as well. Buddy Heald, Lou Williams, Andre Drummond, Al Horford, Larry Markkinen, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jamal Murray um, are your participants in that. So who do you have winning the skills challenge? Sweet Lou. Sweet Lou. All right. I'm I'm Mm going to go out on a, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Spencer Dinwiddie. I'm going to go Spencer Dinwiddie. And the skills part, which is the big, you know, the big thing in here, like I really don't know how he's going to do on the passing part and the, and the, the, <laughs> the shooting. But I tell you one thing, since it is a timed event, yo, Spencer Dinwiddie is one of the fastest, quickest dudes that I've seen this season while watching basketball. So, you know, your speed can make up for a lot of, Mishaps that you might make during this competition. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and pick probably who everybody else has coming in last, and I'm gonna go with Spencer Dinwiddie from the Nets on that one. All right, so we got the JBL three point contest. You got your defending champion, who I called last year, Eric Gordon. You got Devin Booker, Clay Thompson, Brad Beal, Wayne Ellington, Kyle Lowry, Tobias Harris. And Paul George. First, first of all, shout out to Kyle Lowry because this is not his first time being in this competition. And when he came into the NBA, dude couldn't shoot a gun. He couldn't shoot a gun. Off. And <laughs> so, so props to him for improving his game, improving his jump shot, becoming a perennial All Star, being invited to three point shootouts. I'm proud of you, young Philly man. I'm proud of you. Um, Ah, this one is a little harder to call. Like, I called Eric Gordon. Um, I think I'm going to go back to the well with this one. I think I'm going to go Clay Thompson uh, reclaiming his, his spot in the three-point contest this year. Who you got? You got me, Clay. I got Clay. Clay. Clay got that okay. rifle. <laughs> All right. And shout-out to Brad Beal because 
I think Bradley Beal is better than Clay as a player. <laughs> um, he can Damn do a little bit more. Yeah. In my opinion, he can do a little yeah. bit more. But we'll talk about that another time. Actually, we could do a versus on that. Yeah. And throw it on the page. Yeah, that's a pretty can. good versus. Um, the Verizon Slam Dunk Contest. So you got Victor Oladipo, Donovan Mitchell from the Jazz, Larry Nance Jr., and Dennis Smith. Junior. So basically, you got three guards and a, and a, and a big forward. Um, two guys that can that are basically point guards, and then two guards in Oladipo and then Larry Nance. Uh, who do you have in this? Dan, uh, Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, actually, Dennis Smith or Larry Nance. Larry can get up, but I got Dennis Smith. Oladipo, if Oladipo is doing what I think he's doing during the All-Star break with um, the lovely young lady in his life, there's no way he's buying the energy <laughs> to, uh, to compete in this event. And if he does, then he might be a little bit on the left-hand side of life. And from from what I've seen lately, I think the popular picks are like between Donovan Mitchell and Dennis Smith Jr. I think they'll show well, and their dunks that they do get down will look better because they're smaller guys. Um, but I think I'm actually go with Victor Oladipo. I mean, he's been doing some crazy stuff in the games. So let's see what we can do. Um, no, this he's year not and, You've seen this the before, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, Larry Nance, I, he has to show and prove for me because I know Larry Nance has major bounce just like his daddy. But I, I haven't seen the creativity from him in the game. I mean, he probably didn't have opportunities. So he just got to show and prove to me. So I'm, I'm gonna go Victor Oladipo on this, but I'm, I'm keeping my eye on Larry Nance Jr. Dick in the process. Out. All right, so we're gonna go to Sunday to the big game, the 67th NBA All Star Game. We got Team LeBron versus Team Steph. As we know, throughout the uh, <laughs> passing weeks, LeBron's team is basically falling apart. He's had about four, five people uh, replaced on his team. Not exactly the team that he picked, but Team LeBron has LaMarcus Aldridge. We'll have LeBron, LaMarcus Aldridge, Bradley Beal, DeMarcus Cousins, who's injured and not playing, Anthony Davis, who is injured and probably not playing. Um, That's probably for, you know, just to be safe because he's all they got left down there. You got Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, Victor Oladipo, um, Chris Porzingis, who's injured and not playing. John Wall, who's injured and not playing. Russell Westbrook, Paul George, Andre Drummond, Goran Dragic, and Kimball Walker. Team Steph, you got Giannis Antetokounmpo, Jimmy Butler, DeMar DeRozan, Joel Embiid, Draymond Green, James Harden, Al Horford, Damian Lillard, Kyle Lowry, Clay Thompson, Carl Anthony Towns. Who's going to win this game? And... Who's going to be your MVP of the 67th All-Star Game? we got to get out of here. Steph. Uh, Steph team, team will win. Uh, Carl and Sykes and all. LeBron's team is going to win, and uh, KD is going to get MVP. I thought LeBron's team was head and shoulders better when it was originally picked. But now that they have all of these – not the you know, the reserves are bad. The people who came in and stepped up are bad. Because of that, I'm I'm going to go with Team Steph, and I'm going to go with Giannis. I think Giannis is going to be gunning for that uh, MVP. I think Steph's team is going to be raining three from all over the court. We'll, we'll see how it goes down. Look, everybody, I want to thank all the brothers and sisters for joining us for another brief in the, in the war room. Shout out to everybody in the chat room on Facebook, Twitter, War Room Sports Game Time on the Group Me app, and callers who called in to holler at us. If we didn't get to you, we are very sorry about that. Tune in next week live right here on the on the US Podcast Network as we dive deeper into the NBA post all Star weekend. And of course, we'll catch you up on everything happening all around the world of sports. Uh, we'll check in on the Olympics, get that metal count going. So until then, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your week, and we'll see you back here next time. Be sure to catch our conversations on Facebook, Twitter, as well as blogs, webcasts, and network podcasts on warroomsports.com. Also, make sure you pick up his book at sportsthebook.com on warroomsports.com. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. 
be steadfast in the war against ignorance. So this, you come, son. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.